scripture. I love it. And so, so, so here we go. We said, so I was asking God, I was asking God and I was singing in my, in my, uh, in my room and I said, change me, oh God, make me more. Wash me through and through. Create. We were looking for a prophetic word. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. And Father, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this word. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for the atmosphere. I thank you for the spirit in this place. And I ask right now that you would allow this word that you have put in me to flow out of me to your people in a language that they understand. Bless us now. I submit. I yield my body to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. So let me see if I can get this through really quick. So, 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 so. Thank you, God. So here we go. You guys can relax. Okay? I'm not really that much of a tuned-up preacher. All right? But if they push me, I might go there. All right. So, so now that I'm relaxed, what happened was, what happened was is that, um, uh, uh, I was looking and I was asking God and God said, what do you need? What do you need? And so when I looked at this scripture, I pictured that, you know how sometimes we're driving on the road past the Kia and, and then we hear things and things start to sputter in our vehicles. And so God took me to a vehicle and since it's a superwoman, superpower, super Sunday. And so what we're trying to do is empower our women. Right. There are times when us women, we get stuck on the side of the road. The Lord gave me this because see, Paul was also stuck on the side of the road. I hope you guys are listening to me in the here in the Holy Ghost. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. He was on the side of the road and he was stuck on the side of the road. He had broken down. Somebody tell everybody, tell your neighbor, he broke down. He broke down on the side of the road. And see, what happens is when we break down on the side of the road, a lot of times it's because we are not conducting maintenance. See, what's happening with the prophetic word is that the church is not conducting maintenance. God gave me a subtitle for this. He said, you need to check into the service center. See, we have to make sure that we are conducting a proper service and making sure that we are maintaining our spiritual vehicle. Amen, amen. So the Lord gave me a parallel because I do my little research and I never want to be a helpless woman. Amen. Come on. Amen, amen. So I well, need maybe, to know. Maybe. <laughs> well, I don't want to be the damsel in distress because ain't nobody about to come and do nothing to me. Amen. God help you, Jesus. But it's just, it just is what it is. And so what brings you into the service center? Now, service centers are special places where you go to get repair. Yeah. Something like the church. Amen. What brings you into the service center is when the check engine light comes on. Come on. Yeah. See, there's certain things that God will indicate to you that you are not in the right place, that Come something on. is not working right, and something will happen in the middle of the night, in the midnight hour. You're wondering why you're up at 3 o'clock in the morning and you can't get no sleep. It's because your check engine light is on. Yeah. And so then he says that when your car is sputtering, maybe it's not running right. I might need somebody to turn this down just a little little bit um your car is not running right and so what ends up happening is you begin to sputter or you begin to stall or you begin to do something and when you just uh, 
Oh, you can't get their mind right. Can't get. Come on, women. You know we can't get our mind right. We want to do something, don't want to do something. Want to do something, don't want to do something. We sputtering and engine is is kind of not running right. That's another thing that brings you into the suffer center. But then see in some of the more modern cars, right? Some of the more modern cars, the ones that you have to push the button to turn on. So what happens is I can set on my dashboard where I can every six to three, three to six thousand miles, I can set a reminder will it'll come on and it'll say, hey, you need to service your engine. You need to get an oil change. You need to rotate your tires. And so that's when you have to take yourself into the service center and it's called a multi-point checkup. If you're taking notes, write down multi, where's my, where's my, where's baby sister? She was in here. Multi-point checkup. All right. And so um, the first thing that they check is your alignment. Okay. Turn to your neighbor and say, check your alignment. Check your alignment. So anytime, and this is me empowering us for Super Women Sunday, anytime you let go of the wheel, if you're on the highway, if you let go of the wheel momentarily, what will happen is if you're not in alignment, you will veer yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Amen, amen. That's right. You will go, listen to me in the spirit, in directions that you don't want to go. That you never intended. You ever ended up in a situation that you never intended of being in? Well, that means you were off alignment. You were not in line with the will on word of God. And so some of us have hit so many bumps, we've hit so many curves, we've hit so many potholes in our lives that we've been derailed. Something happens where it begins to shake and then what happens is, and I don't want to get into all of the auto mechanics and things of that nature, but here's the thing, I want to get to the point as to where when we walk into the service center, you also have to make sure that the mechanic knows what they're doing. Hallelujah. So you better have a little knowledge for yourself. You can't just walk up into anybody's service center and let anybody tell you anything because you'll walk out there wrong. And the thing about it is you didn't get robbed by them. You robbed yourself because you didn't even know what you were going in there again. That's good. That's a fact. And so and so and so it means that we have the anxiety and the stress of keeping our hand on the steering wheel. We ever, you ever held on to your life so tight because you weren't sure if you were going to veer off the road because you hadn't had your alignment checked? And so if we veer off to the right or to the left, but doesn't the Bible say that we should not look to the right or to the left, but we should be looking straight ahead? Didn't Paul say that I have to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling? Doesn't he say that I have to shoot an arrow straight ahead? and look and get to my target if you don't have your life aligned with the will and with the word of God then you will be wrong the thing about it is some of us have been in this condition so long that when we do get in alignment it feels different you gotta talk we used to be broken thank you Jesus but the thing about it is when we do it, it gives us a heightened sensitivity. It gives us a heightened sensitivity. And so the next thing we need when they go in for your fight, your multi-point check, your multi-point check, is that we need a tire rotation. You got to have a tire rotation. And some, some tires we run on to front-wheel drive. Front-wheel drive is what pulls the car, right? Come on, y'all hear me in the spirit. Front-wheel drive is what pulls the car. Rear-wheel drive is what pushes the car, right? It pushes you through. And then you have all-wheel drive where all of them are working all together at the same time. Now, most cars are coming in, the more modern cars are coming in all-wheel drive. You gotta have all four wheels hitting the road. But here's the thing, it doesn't matter how many wheels, whether it's pushing you or pulling you, or all of them are going at the same time. If you don't have no grip, See, the reason why they rotate your tires is because there can be so much wear and tear on the front or so much wear and tear on the back or so much wear and tear after running up so many miles. You've been, what is that, I've been running a long time and I ain't tired yet. Yeah, but you still got to get them tires rotated because what happens is they check for the tread. They check for the grip. They check whether or not the rubber is actually meeting the road and it's actually getting you where you want to go. And the reason why you need a grip is because in order for you to get started, you got to have grip. Yeah, I'm up. And if you want to stop, you got to have a grip. Turn to your neighbor and say, get a grip. Get a grip. Next. 
you have to check your brakes. Because it doesn't matter what kind of grip you have if the brakes don't work. Uh-huh. Am I preaching to y'all? Just give me a hand if I'm preaching. Okay. And I'm teaching you something too? All right. Good, good, good. And so most cars are built with an anti-lock brake system. See, the old cars, see, before 1970, I think when they came out with the Cadillac, Cadillac, Fleetwood, Broham, and the DeVille, they had the anti-lock braking system. And see, what would happen is if we ever slam on the brakes, the wheel locks. And one of two things will happen when you slam on the brake. Hear me in the spirit. Amen. One, you won't be able to steer the car. Amen. Amen. And you're going to hit whatever you was going to hit That's right. anyway. That's right. Come on, y'all hear me in the spirit. How many of you have slammed on the brake? You thought you could stop yourself. You thought you were going to keep from getting into that collision. You thought you were going to stop from getting into that relationship. You thought you were going to stop whatever you thought you were going to stop. You slammed on the bricks and guess what? You didn't have a grip so you slid into it anyway. Uh oh. Come on. And then, and then, there's another thing that will happen. If you don't slide into it anyway, uh-huh. the wheel has locked, but you end up spinning out of control. Right. Yeah. How many of you have slammed on the brakes? You didn't get into the collision, but you was crazy as a bed bug afterward. Uh-huh. Come on now. You didn't get into that situation, but you didn't know what direction you was going into. You was just, oh God, I'm over here. I'm over there. I'm at this church. I want to shout. I want to cry. I want to be mad. Now likened it to intercession because what happens is the anti-lock brake system when you slam on the brake it intercedes and it makes the brakes actually pulse and makes them pop you remember how they used to tell us pump your brakes pump your brakes pump your brakes see what happens is the intercession uh-huh. Of the anti lock but come on, the Holy Spirit, yeah. come on. With the intercession says, you slamming, but I'm going to pump. Yeah. So that you can slow down. Yeah. So that you don't run into something. Yeah. And here's the thing, I'm not going to let your wheel lock. I'm going to take control of the wheel. Whatever, hey, God, whatever way you want to go to avoid the collision, I'm going to pump. Okay, next slide. Now here's my disclaimer. Based on the research, the anti-lock brakes, you know the spirit is subject to the prophet. That's right. It don't always work in certain conditions. See, there's certain conditions you ain't got no business having your butt out on the road. See, 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 in, in icy conditions or when the weather changes. Now, main, main, mind you, you Advisory. haven't done your alignment. That's right. Wow. You didn't get your tires rotated. Right. You ain't got no grip. You ain't, ready. That's right. you ain't do your brakes. And you, and you out here in the snow. Amen. You out here in the season where it's raining, where it's flooding, where the storms and the lightning. You out here in the storm and you ain't even right. Ain't even right. Ain't even ready. Jesus. Ain't ready. Saul, Saul, got broke down on the side of the road. And so there's some few other things. There's the the pads that make sure that you stop and you have the calipers. And I didn't get all into that, but the calipers squeeze to make sure that you slow down. I'm giving you all of these ladies because when you walk into the service station, whether in the physical or in the spiritual, you need to know what you're talking about so that you don't get robbed and that you don't rob yourself. Here's the part that made me shout. Here's the part that made me shout. Right. One of the things that keeps the car running mm-hmm. is what? Yes. Oh. Oil. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding. It's both. That's right. 
the gas and the oil. Oil. The fuel yes. and the oil. Yeah. The word mm -hmm. and the anointing. Mm -hmm. Come on. The fuel. Come on. And the oil. Yeah, God. The word on. And, and the anointing. Yes, God. See, there's something that happens, and it happens in the spark plugs. Come on, this is why you gotta keep those done. The spark plugs is what actually yeah. it ignites. Yeah. It ignites. Come on, fan the flame. It ignites. The Holy Spirit it ignites the word, it ignites the anointing, it ignites, and it gets you started, it gets your engine running, it starts your pistons to turn it. And see, the reason why you need the oil is because oil keeps everything lubricated, it keeps everything flowing. See, sometimes the reason why people can't lift their hands in church is because they ain't got no flow. They need some oil. They stand in that step, gears locked. Yeah. yeah. Talk about it. You said they it's true. suck. But if you get you some anointing, if you get you some oil, if you get you some word, see when the word come on, that's when the power comes. So when you get ready to start up and you turn the engine or you press the button, it's all of a sudden it's yea though I walk through the valley of shadows and death, I will fear no evil for God is with me. For his rock and his staff, they comfort me. I he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. And even when my enemies came against me, they stumbled and they fell. I am walking in the anointing of God. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am the head and not the tail. Come on, some of you need the word and the oil. The word, oh, my Lord. Jesus. So you can flow, flow. Oh, and your gears won't lock up. Come on. Your money won't lock up. Come on. Your love won't lock up. Come on. Your kids won't lock up. Come on. Jesus. My Lord. Y'all can sit down. Sit down. Don't push me. Don't push me. It keeps the engine running. The anointing destroys the yoke. And so, and so, and so, and so, and so. Here, when you have enough oil, because they tap the dipstick, right? Sometimes, Pastor Kia, you're going to have to take a dipstick. Yes. And check the oil. That's right. You got to check the oil. Yes. See, if you're low on a court, yes. if you're low on a court, that means there's a leak. Ah, oh, God. Yes. And then, come on. And so, and so then, but you can't change the oil. See, here's the thing, and I'm trying to hurry up. I'm trying to move forward. The oil system, it allows the system to run on less fuel. See, you don't have to burn as much energy. Come you don't on. have to get up here and sing so hard. You don't have to come up here and preach so hard. You don't have to come up here and work so hard. You don't need to burn up all that gas when you have enough oil. Hey, God. And so then the other thing, it also keeps the temp at your love. Amen. You don't get mad. You don't get stressed. When you got enough oil, you don't get stressed. You don't get mad. See, some of us need to do a oil change. See, because see, after a while, after you don't have to you have this oil, see, it gets wear and tear on the moving parts. And after you've been doing things a little while, it can get a little strenuous and, and things can get a little heated up. But this is why you need to always change your filter along with the oil. You got to make sure that you change how you see things. Because see, sometimes things come in to contaminate the oil. There's a, there's a scripture in Ecclesiastes that says something about a fly that can contaminate the oil. See, one little thing what? in your engine can contaminate the whole engine. See, it can get stuck in a little part and cause things not to be able to run right. But if you are regularly and frequently changing your oil every 3,000 to 6,000 miles, maybe every three to six months, Pastor Kia, we need to have a prayer service where people need to get down on their knees and change the oil. Change your filter. Talking great. God bless you. God bless you back. <laughs> you gotta change the filter. Yeah, you got to change. Because the filter says that the oil is no good if it's contaminated. It's not filtering. That's right. Come on. The filter cleans the oil and then releases it into the engine. Come on. The filter. Listen here. The filter. The filter. Cleans the oil. Cleans the oil. And releases it. And releases it into the engine. Into the engine. You got to have a good filter. Everything can't come 
Amen. Thank you, Pastor Kia, for helping me preach. Because yeah. I'm getting low on fuel. No. Hallelujah. <laughs> And it keeps it and it circulates it through the moving parts. And so it, it, it's moving things through the through the engine. And the engine is like the heart. The engine is like the heart of the motor. See, you can't let everything into your heart. You got to clean your filter. You gotta, your filters are your eyes. Your filters are your ears. Oh, wait a minute. Because you didn't know your filter is your mouth. That's the muffler, but we ain't going to mess with that today. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so when you find yourself sputtering, when you find yourself going through life, you may need to check your filters. There's a lot of filters. We ain't going to get into them today because we don't got a lot of time. But if we ever come back or anything like that, I'll make sure I do it. We'll do it for Bible study or something like that. And so, and so, and so you might be allowing some dead things or some dead information to contaminate your oil. Let me tell you something, people of God. You got to get rid of some of the stuff in the past. This is why they take the knob off and they let all the oil flow out. All of it. Some of us need to flush. This is how you flush your oil. I got two more, and then I'm about, we're going to shout a little bit, and I'm going to wrap it up. I told you about the spark plugs, that its main responsibility is to make sure that there's enough ignition for the engine to spark, for it to start. There are some people in your life that are not supposed to be there for the long haul. After the spark plugs do their job, their only job is to sustain combustion. The only job is to make sure that the atmosphere stays right for the engine. Amen. After they do their, come on, there are some people in your life, after they do their job, the only thing they're supposed to do is maintain. Amen. Some of us are expecting things from other people. We're expecting them to do things like this. Well, if you keep doing that, you're going to wear your starter out. Come on! If you keep starting, I remember one time I was broke down on and my battery was low. That's that's a difference. Come but on. we ain't going to get into that today. But my battery was low and I kept trying to start it. And I kept trying to start it. Amen. And something was happening and I kept hearing the starter go. Amen. Come on! Then eventually it just like click. Yeah. <laughs> click, click. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. No power. No power. Wasn't nothing turning over. moving. Come on, you got to... Nothing was turning over. Come on! When that happens, you need to call a tow truck. Hey, God. That ain't even in my notes, but you got to have a prayer warrior or a friend, somebody you can call and say, can you come and pick me up? Can you come and bring me to church on Sunday? Can you come and get me a prayer meeting? Can you come pray with me and come and assess, help me assess this situation so I can know where Can you come give me a jump? Something. Should have them on speed dial. I have it. Triple A. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I was looking for acronyms, but I couldn't find them, so I'll bring them back next time. So then, after all of this, Paul is, and I read the scripture, and I hope you can still see it. Paul is broke down on the side of the road. In need of service, in need of repair, in need of sanctuary, in need of Jesus, in need of an oil change, in need of spark plugs, in need of a, of a whole tune-up. Yeah. He needs a whole entire tune-up. And this is why Jesus is saying, why are you persecuting me? Here is your prophetic word. There are a lot of people that are getting ready to prosecute and persecute the people and the believers of the way. Remember where we're traveling, right? On this vehicle, this road is the way. And the people who are on the way, on the way to glory, on the way to God, on the way, and trying to make a way. And there are going to be people who are going to be at the side of the road, just like the Samaritan who was left at the side of the road. I'll come back and preach that one. Wounded and stranded, he fell into the hand of thieves, and they left him right there on the side of the way. And here Saul is, broke down, with his broke down donkey. 
on the side of the road because he was on the wrong, he was on the right path, but he was going on the wrong way. Yeah. He didn't have his engine right. right. His heart right. wasn't Amen. right. Amen. And needed some oil Amen. and needed a change. And this is where you have to go to the master mechanic. See, this is the thing. Yeah. You can't take your vehicle into any That's old right. service the station. Maker. The Some maker. people you gotta take back to the manufacturer. Right. See, on. especially when you're a luxury vehicle. Come on, sis. Yeah. Especially when you're a luxury vehicle. You can't be I drive an infinity. I know it's made by Nissan. And I used to drive a Honda and then I drove Acura. And those are the luxury types. Toyota, Lexus, right? We all know that. Y'all know it. Y'all come on, ladies. Hey, we know what it is. But when you have a luxury vehicle, yeah. it's in your best interest yes, it is. to take it to the manufacturer Amen. or take it to a specialized mechanic dealer. Yeah. I take it to the infinity store. You know why? Because I've had enough experience with bootleg mechanics. Yes. 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 Now, you know I'm comparing this to the church, That's too, right? right. That's okay. Right. Thank you. I'm just being polite. I know. Go ahead. And so, and so when I go to the bootleg mechanic, they say, well, uh, you know, it could be. Uh, it could be. Don't even know what. Well, uh, it sounds like. Uh, don't practice on my car. <laughs> don't practice on my car. Uh, my heart. My heart. My life. Don't do it. Don't do it. But see, the thing about it is, when you know better, and this is why I'm a prophet of God, Ezekiel said, if you see the watchman and the watchman blows the trumpet, if you do it, now it's on you. I told you. Don't take your anointing. Don't take your car. Don't take your vehicle. Don't take whatever you are doing or however you are getting down this road. Don't take it to no bootleg mechanic. Make it to somebody who really specializes in what you do. Now, here's the thing. If I've been in a collision, I take it to a collision shop. If I've been in a motor, or uh, if I have a motor or engine or transmission problem, I just can't seem to shift into gear, I take it to a transmission shop. If I just need maintenance or something like that. But see, if you have a special condition, if you've been through some special things, if your trauma has been specialized and tailored for you, you need to go somewhere where they can take care of it and they can actually diagnose the situation. So really the first step is get into this machine shop or get into the mechanic shop so that they can diagnose the situation. What happens immediately when I go into the Infinity Dealer is they hook my car up to a machine and it reads out. It reads everything that's wrong. If you ever want to know what's wrong with you, hook yourself up to the machine. This is your diagnostic right here. Yes, ma'am. As a matter of fact, this is the manufacturer's manual. This is the manual that you should always keep in your glove compartment. You should always have this because there's a lot of diagnostic information. The word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Recall me. Find, do a diagnostic check. As a matter of fact, they'll send you 
you a letter. God will send you a letter. I'm prophesying a little bit right now. In the midnight hour, God will send you a letter to let you know that there is something that's not safe. There's something that's in your path that's no longer safe for you to be on the road. And what will end up happening is you'll say, God, I'm going to answer the call. I'm going to answer the recall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of this stuff we can change. Some of this stuff we can do ourselves. But we have to go to someone who specializes. Who specializes in these areas of our lives. So let me see. It's almost 2 o'clock. How many minutes? Right, we got to get out of here. We got to get out of here. Let the Lord have Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes. The one thing I want to tell you as I get ready to close is that with every vehicle, there's a manufacturer's warranty. That even though you're hard pressed on every side, oh God, you will never be destroyed. Come on! Even though you're perplexed, oh God. you will never be in despair. Yes, Lord Jesus. Because the warranty says that I am with you always. always. Even until, the, until your motor conks out. Come on. But even if you're at 250,000 miles, I'm still there. if you still got oil, if you still rotating your tires, if you're still maintaining and doing your maintenance, I'm going to be with you, not some of the time, but always. As a matter of fact, I'm your insurance policy, says the Lord. As a matter of fact, I'm your roadside service, says the Lord. Anything you have need of, God said that he will supply. Yes, he will. And he says the parts are in the warehouse. Come on. All you have to do is order the parts. Come on. Order the pots. Put in the request. Here's the scripture. Make your petition known unto God. As a matter of fact, it says, with thanksgiving, make your petition known unto God. And the peace of God that surpasses your understanding, even though you don't know what's wrong with your car, even though you don't know what's wrong with your God, what's wrong with me? He says, the peace of uh, that surpasses even your understanding shall come and guard your heart, that's your engine, and your mind, your circuit board. Hey, God, don't blow a circuit. Don't blow a circuit. I'm done. I'm done. Let me just tell you a little bit about myself. Yes. I am not a master mechanic, but I do know how trauma affects. As I was driving here, and the Lord was still ministering, he'd been downloading this sermon on me for a long time. As I was still, I saw all of these crashed up cars, all of the fenders busted, and, and but see, those are cosmetic parts. See, sometimes we can dress up things, but the end can be all messed up. I remember one time, can I just be transparent for two more minutes? And one time the guy, he came up to me, and he was like, yeah, <laughs> that's my car right there. I said, oh yeah, that's nice. It's that shiny rims and 22 inch rims. That's when 22 inch rims was all that. And it was shiny and tinted windows and everything like that. But me with myself, you know, I'm kind of smart. And so he said, I said, I bet ain't no gas in it. Uh, right, right. It looked good. But it's on E. But it's on E. Come on. What we gonna do? Sit in the car and watch, listen to music? <laughs> we ain't going nowhere? <laughs> Well, come on, you got to be some somebody that's going somewhere. I don't care. You can have a book, a hook, a hoopie, a bucket, or whatever you want. I'll be going somewhere. It doesn't matter the way that the cosmetics look. Come on, I'm talking to you now. It doesn't matter about the cosmetics. I'll be going somewhere. Because there are things that have a godly appearance. But ain't got no power. Yeah. Jesus! I hope I helped y'all. Yes, you did. I hope I helped you. So here's the thing I'm going to do. I would like to have either you or your armor bearer or someone. This oil that I got came from the Allah Baba, the Ali, um, Ali store that's in Jerusalem. So I want to be very careful with this because it's very expensive. But when you have expensive oil, you don't mind sharing it, right? And so do you have, what's in this bottle right here? Oil. Okay. Can I pour a little bit of this? You want to touch it and bless it and make sure it ain't? 
Okay, ain't no flies in this oil. Hallelujah. I'm going to pour some oil into this for the anointing. And if you put a little bit more of that in there, it will make sure. Because see, one thing about oil is stretches. Yes, God. And so I'm going to touch and anoint each and every one of you. But I'm going to give you, give me your right finger. Anoint yourself. Change me, oh God. Make me more like you. Change me, oh God. Wash me. Thank you. 